Welcome to part two of the basic Ableton tips series, a series designed to give you the most important tips needed to get up and running with Ableton 10. My name is Daniel with Reverb Nation. In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to add arrangement markers, how to save a template so you don't start every project with a blank screen, and how to create groups within groups. So let's get started. So the first tip that we're going to go over is how to add arrangement markers. But why would we want to create arrangement markers? Arrangement markers help us navigate our song easily by indicating exactly where each section in our arrangement is. To create an arrangement marker, all we have to do is zoom in to the spot that we want to add an arrangement marker and right click. And then click add locator. And then we can type in anything we want to. And since this is the beginning of our song, we'll type in intro. And to play back our song from the arrangement marker that we have just created, all we have to do is double click the arrangement marker. We can add in as many arrangement markers as we would like. So progressing on with the song here, we now have the verse. So I'll go ahead and add a, an arrangement marker and label it verse. Once again, right click and click add locator. And we can do this for our entire song and quickly navigate through our arrangement by double clicking the arrangement markers. It's also important to note that we can label these anything we want to. So we don't have to label each arrangement marker by the specific part of the arrangement. We could create notes with these arrangement markers, really anything at all to help us with the workflow of our song. But I would recommend using the arrangement markers to label the arrangements as well as writing notes about the specific song that I'm working on. The second tip that I would like to go over is how to save a template. Templates can be a very helpful tool in your workflow as they allow you to start a project with plugins, instruments, markers, channels, or samples already loaded. This can help kickstart the creative process and help you get into the creation of your track much faster. So creating a template is highly recommended here. So first, let's add instruments and samples to our track. That way we can save them as a template. So let's go ahead and add a mini track here. And I like to use the synth serum in a lot of my tracks. So I'll go ahead and load an instance of extra serum here. And I also usually like to start my tracks with drums. So I'll create a couple of audio tracks here and group them together and label them drums. And to keep the arrangement and workflow going, I like to have some effects already loaded up so I can easily transition from section to section. So we'll go into my samples here and we'll get some impacts. And then some whooshes and sweeps. And then a riser. And we'll go ahead and group these also and title them effects. So now we have a nice start for our template. We'll want to save this. So each time we open up Ableton, our drums, serum, and our effects load also. All we have to do is go on over to preferences and then click on the file folder tab here and then navigate to the top where it says save current set as default and click save and then click OK when it asks overwrite the default set. And now we have saved our current project as a template. Let's go ahead and check this. Let's exit out of Ableton and reopen it. Don't save. Open back up Ableton again. We can now see that our template has been loaded. We have our drums group. We have our serum and we have our effects. So I definitely recommend 
loading up some of your favorite samples, plugins, effects, and load up channels that you know you're going to create. That way you can speed up your workflow. And the third and final tip for part two of this basic Ableton Tips series is creating groups within groups. Groups are a great way to organize all your MIDI and audio tracks and a great way to apply group processing to select tracks. To group audio files together, all we have to do is highlight the tracks that we want to group and then click Command G on a Mac or Control G on a PC. And this will group your channels. And then we can apply any processing that we would like to the group and it will affect every channel here. So we can have a listen. You can hear our EQ movements here affected all the channels here. Taking this a step further, we can also create groups within a group. But why would we want to do this? One of the most common reasons is to apply processing to a select group of sounds. So let's say we dial in our EQ for the overall group. We have a nice low cut here, but now we want to apply a separate processing to our background vocals only here. We want these background vocals to sit farther back in the mix and we want to apply reverb to them. But we don't want to have this reverb affect the main vocals we have playing here. If we put on the reverb on the group, it will affect every single channel here. So if we go over to our background vocals and select both of them and once again click Command G or Control G, we can create another group within our group. So the top group that we have here with our EQ will affect all our audio tracks. And now if we go ahead and load up a reverb plugin and place it on the group within the group, this will just now affect these two audio tracks while also having our EQ affect these channels as well. If we didn't have this group, then we would have to apply a reverb to each individual channel, or we would have to move these out of the group and then group these separately and apply another EQ plugin. So creating groups within groups will help save CPU and you can now be more efficient with your processing. So now if we go back to our group within a group and again, apply, apply that reverb and now listen to the tracks. So you can hear the reverb is applied and now we can listen to the main vocals. Sun is rising over the mountains. I know it will you can hear they are not affected by this reverb. So now let's have a listen to all the channels. So this group within a group can be applied to anything. You don't have to apply it just to your vocals. You can apply it to instruments, effects, drums, really anything that you would like to help process your instruments in a more efficient way.